this is Esan. Welcome to lab number three. The topic for today is reaction and response time. However, in addition to these, we will also talk a little about movement time. So the idea of this lab is to essentially help you to understand the concepts of reaction time, movement time, and response time. And you will learn it as you and your team designs a tool or a device through which you can compute either reaction time or response time or both. Conventionally, or intuitively, you can think, as the name suggests, that we typically use time as a measure to compute reaction, response, or movement time. However, for this lab, your constraint is you cannot use time as a measure as you come up with your measuring device. So, you cannot use time. So, before I dive into the details of this lab, let us first briefly review some of the required concepts for this lab. So the reason for this brief review is to help you maximize your performance in this lab. So let's start. The broader topic that this lab is a part of is the measurement of motor performance, which essentially requires you to answer the question, what characteristic of motor performance will you measure to assess some kind of progress? So what do I mean by that? So let me put this into some other way. How can you characterize or differentiate two different person performing a similar task? Who is better? To help you understand a little more, let us put this two questions into a situation. Imagine you are a physical therapist who is trying to help a stroke patient learning to walk again. How would you measure whether the person is learning or not? So maybe you would want to use distance as a measure. So that would mean that how far the person was able to walk on its own, on his or her own, every single day, and you see whether it's improving or not. Or maybe you would like to define it in terms of his, his or her balance and postural stability. So balance can be a criteria. Or maybe you, can, you want to be a little more fancy, and you, would, you might want to use some kind of a biomechanical, biomechanical uh, characterization, which would enable you to analyze some of the kinematic characteristics of the body. As a note, remember that kinematics, kinematics has nothing to do with force. This can be one of your questions in the exam, so remember this. Kinematics has nothing to do with force. This is just a random fact, so let us go back to what we were saying. So you can understand that there are a variety of ways to measure motor skill performance. However, in actual practice, researchers have differentiated motor skill performance measures into two different categories. One is uh, performance outcome measures, so that is outcome measures, and the other one would be performance process or production measure. So as you can understand from the name outcome that it has to do with outcome or the result of a performance. For example, the distance, how far the patient walked, or maybe how fast did an athlete ran as he ran a certain distance. On the other hand, performance production or process measure provides a little more detailed information that indicates how the outcome was produced. For example, this biomechanical analysis of kinematic data, which shows different aspects of the various involved systems which participate in the production of the motor skill. It can also be EEG data from the brain or fMRI images or EMG data from the muscles. So now that I've given you some brief introduction to outcome and process measures, my question would be which one do you think encompasses reaction and response time. So I assume that you all know the answer. It is they belong so reaction time and response time belong to the category of outcome measure because you cannot really know anything about the production process. You can only see uh, see the outcome. So as you can see, I've cleared the screen for your convenience. So let's go back to what we were saying. So a very common example of reaction or response time is shown in this image. 
uh, runner hears the gunshot and starts to run. This actually is a very good example to explain reaction time. Remember, in literature, reaction time is always referred to as RT, whereas response time, they always use it completely. So what I mean is they write response time. I would request you to follow the same convention. So going back to what we were saying, in this co context of the runner starting to run after he hears the gunshot, reaction time is the time between the gunner's gunshot, which would be the go signal, and the beginning of the movement. So, which would mean the initiation of the response, or the initiation of the movement. However, there is something that you have to be careful. Reaction time does not include any movement related to a specific action. But only till the time before the movement begins is how we define reaction time. So up till this time is how we define reaction time. Again to stress, reaction time has nothing to do with movement related to a specific action. It is till the time before movement actually begins. Now the thing that you see here is the go signal which can take various forms which affects different sensory systems in our body so it can take the form of light it can be a buzzer sound it can be kind of a electric shock or maybe a word on a screen and all these actually can be related to different sensory systems say for instance vision hearing or touch and finally uh, to give you a full picture about this uh, reaction time that would be usually you always have a warning signal. This is basically to assess optimal reaction time. Um, so some type of warning signal should be given prior to the stimulus signal. So in case of running before actually shooting the gun, maybe the person who was doing the shooting um, like, can say, ready, set, go and then shoot. So this actually gives a kind of a warning signal to the athlete as he prepares uh, the sprint. Um, so you can intuitively understand that reaction time can be used as a performance measure to assess how quickly a person can initiate a required movement. So now that you have some understanding and review of reaction time, let's have a look into movement time. So as you can see here, movement time usually begins when reaction time would end. So it begins when reaction time ends. So this is the um, total time between the initiation of the movement the completion of the movement or the action so this time and so when you add reaction time and movement time so all so when you add this two all together reaction time plus movement time you actually find what we call response time so it's the addition of these two response time now there is something that you need to be careful so which is reaction time so let me go over here Reaction time and movement time, they are not related. What do I mean by that? So first, they're not related, so they are basically called, they're independent. Independent. It would mean that just by knowing reaction time, there is no way you can predict movement time, or the other way around. This is not possible. So, um, uh, an example would be, say for instance, if a person uh, in a group of people has the fastest reaction time in performance situation, that person may not always have the fastest movement time in the group. So now that we are done giving you a review of reaction time, response time, and movement time, let us just summarize it one more time. Reaction time is the interval between the onset of the signal or stimulus to the initiation of a response, which will be the action or the movement actually. So this section is the reaction time. We have also looked into movement time, which is the starting at the, and the ending of the action. So this is the movement time, and we know that when we add this together, we actually find the response time. Response time. And we have also seen different kind of stimulus or go signals. Seen in the sense like we have also talked about different kind of uh, stimulus or go signal, which would, which was like light, color, word or, word or sound, shock or vibration, which actually the signals can basically relate to different systems a sensory mo sensory system which can be vision for light sound for hearing and 
vibration with touch. Now, given this brief introduction and summary, let us move on to the next phase, which would be the different types, the different types of reaction time situations. And if you remember from class, you know that there are three different types. One was um, simple reaction time. The second one was choice reaction time. And the third one was discrimination reaction time. Discrimination reaction time. So let's start with simple reaction time, which is very simple. It's a situation where there is only one stimulus, which is this blue light showing up and requires the participant to take a uh, finger tapping action using his index finger. Um, so whenever the light shows up, the person taps the response key with his index finger. So this is simple reaction time. One stimulus and only one response option. However, now let us have a look into choice reaction time and how it is different from simple. Well, in this case, as you can understand from the name, that you have a little more choices. Here you have a blue light, an orange or a red one, most probably orange, and then there's this green light. Here the idea is um, you have your all three different fingers placed on three different respon response keys, and whichever light shows up, you need to press the corresponding key as fast as possible. So that would be your choice reaction time. So you can understand that your reaction time here is intuitively going to be a, the fastest, because you have only one stimulus and only one response key. Here, you have three stimulus, and you have three response keys, and anything can shoot up, um, light up, I mean, um, and you have to act accordingly, and this would intuitively create a little more pressure on you, and uh, you have to be fast, so you can understand your reaction to slow down here a little bit. Now, let's move on to the third one, which is the discrimination reaction time. Here, the idea is similar as well. The only difference uh, is, like, you have all these three stimulus showing up, the blue one, the orange or the red one, and the green one, and you have only one response key with your index finger on it and you only respond when the blue light shows up so if the green light would show up you would not do anything if the orange one shows up you do not do anything if the green shows up again you don't do anything however the next phase the blue one should uh, lights up and you tap so that would be your discrimination reaction time situation um, so one example of simple reaction time would be the sprint sprinter example that we have talked about it's B R I N D E R, where there is the gunshot and the sprinter or the athlete starts running however the choice reaction time might be um, the traffic signal at an intersection in the street or somewhere so uh, if the green light shows up you need to do something if the yellow light shows up you do something different uh, you actually get prepared to move if the red light shows up which is not this one but assume this was red and if, if this shows uh, shows up you have to press the brakes and stop so you can understand based on the lights that you see, you have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. Uh, regarding discrimination reaction time, um, it can be um, so. I will so it can be. Um, I will give you an example from the book where they talk about the joggers' experience, which is um, joggers would frequently experience this kind of reaction time situations uh, when they come across something that they need to step over, like a tree or a crub, uh, as they're running. Uh, so there are many different stimuli in the environment, but uh, he only responds to a specific one. 